liver is the second largest organ of the human body and weighs around roughly 1.2 to 1.8 kg. It is reddish brown in color and occupies the right hypochondrium, the epigastrium and extends into the left hypochondrium. The liver is characterized by the presence of ligaments. The ligaments can be classified as true ligaments and false ligaments. True ligaments are developmental folds while false ligaments are modifications of the peritoneum. So here this major ligament which you see is the falciform ligament. As the name suggests it is sickle shaped. So this is the falciform ligament and this divides into the superior layer of the coronary ligament. The superior layers of the coronary ligament meet with the inferior layer of the coronary ligament to form the right triangular ligament on the right side and the left triangular ligament. So these are the false ligaments or the peritoneal folds which you see. The true ligaments are developmental folds and the true ligaments seen here are in the posterior free margin of the falciform ligament, the ligamentum teres hepatis which is a remnant of the left umbilical vein and the ligamentum venosum which is a remnant of, so the ligamentum venosum here which is a remnant of the ductus venosus. So these are the ligaments of the liver. The liver is divided into lobes for descriptive purposes. The lobes are anatomical lobes and physiological lobes. On the anterior surface this is by the presence of the falciform ligament while on the other surfaces it is by the presence of the ligamentum teres hepatis and the ligamentum venosum. So this line divides the liver into two lobes. So the ligamentum teres hepatis here, the ligamentum venosum here, carrying the falciform ligament here, divides it into the right and the left halves. So this lobe is called as the right lobe of the liver and this is the left lobe of the liver. This is the anatomical subdivision of the liver. The physiological subdivision of the liver is by the falciform ligament anteriorly but on the posteroinferior surface by the gallbladder, the fossa for the gallbladder and the inferior vena cava. This line is called as the cholecystocavel line. This division forms the physiological lobes of the right and the left lobes of the liver. Now, this also contributes to the formation of the transverse fissure and the horizontal fissures. So here you have a H-shaped fissure here. The H-shaped fissure, the left limb of the H-shaped fissure is formed by the ligamentum teres hepatis and the ligamentum venosum. The right limb is formed by the gallbladder and the vena cava while the horizontal limb is formed by the porta hepatis which is characterized by the duct, the artery and the vein, the bile duct the hepatic artery and the portal vein. So this contributes to the formation of the trans, the head-shaped fissure with two limbs, the left limb and the right limb and the transverse limb. On this region you can also identify the presence of the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe. The quadrate lobe is roughly quadrilateral in shape as its name suggests. So these are the presenting parts, the lobes of the liver. Now we go on to the presenting parts of the liver. The liver is characterized mainly by one sharp acute margin. This border is called as the inferior border. The inferior border is characterized by the presence of an interlobar notch which lodges the falciform ligament and a cystic notch which lodges the fossa for the gallbladder. So this sharp margin which extends from the left triangular ligament downwards is called as the inferior margin. The other two margins which are the postero superior borders and postero inferior border are ill defined. The postero superior border is formed by the superior layer of the coronary ligament the lower border of the the upper border of the inferior vena cava and the left triangular ligament. The postero inferior border is formed by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament, the lower border of the inferior vena cava and towards the left triangular ligament. So these two borders are ill defined and leaves a space in between which is called as the posterior surface. So the borders are, I repeat once again, the sharp well defined border 
which is the inferior border, the ill-defined borders which are the postro superior border and the postro inferior border. The surfaces are divided again into the diaphragmatic surface or the parietal surface. So this surface which is in close relation with the diaphragm or the parietal is called as the parietal surface while the surface here which is in relation with the viscera is called as the inferior surface or the visceral surface. So this is the visceral surface of the liver while this is the parietal surface of the liver. The parietal surface is again it's a continuum and is divided into the anterior surface, the superior surface and the right lateral surface. The anterior surface is characterized by the falciform ligament. The superior surface is related to the central tendon of the diaphragm while the right lateral surface is related to the 6th to the 11th ribs and the upper part to the right lung here to the right coastal diaphragmatic recess and here to the wall corresponding to the 10th and the 11th ribs. So this surface is what you have as your parietal surface. Now we go on to the visceral surface. The visceral surface extends between the inferior margin and the postero superior margin. It is again divided into the postero superior surface or the surfaces which is called as the posterior surface and the inferior surface. The part which lies between the postero superior border and the postero inferior border is called as the posterior surface. The posterior surface from right to left, so if I hold it in the anatomical position, this is what comes towards the right. So from right to left, the posterior surface is characterized by the presence of the bare area, the groove for the inferior vena cava, the caudate lobe, the groove for the ligamentum venosum and a small area for the esophagus. So now we come on to describe the bare area of the liver. The bare area of the liver is a non-peritoneal area or rather the largest non-peritoneal area. It is bounded by the superior layer of the coronary ligament, the inferior layer of the coronary ligament, apex by the right triangular ligament, base by the groove for the inferior vena cava. Next which we have here is the inferior vena cava. The floor of the inferior vena cava is non-peritoneal in nature and is pierced by various veins which are the hepatic veins. So here you can see the floor pierced by the hepatic veins in which drain the venous blood into the inferior vena cava. Then you have the fissure for the ligamentum venosum lodging in between that you have the caudate lobe. This is the area where you have the esophagus being impressed and the left triangular ligament. So this forms the posterior surface. The rest of the area on the visceral surface between the postero inferior border and the inferior border is called as the inferior surface. The inferior surface is characterized by the presence of the porta hepatis which we have already described. The porta hepatis the gallbladder, the fossa for the gallbladder which lodges the gallbladder, the quadrate lobe and the fissure for the ligamentum teres hepatis. So these are the major features which are identifiable. You see the porta hepatis, the gallbladder, the quadrate lobe and the fissure for the ligamentum teres hepatis. Now if you look here, just superior to the porta hepatis you see the presence of two processes this process is called as the caudate process the caudate process if you remember forms the roof of the epiploic foramen and this process which goes downwards is and to the left is called as a papillary process so the caudate lobe gives off two processes the caudate process and the papillary process which are features of the inferior surface so to identify on the inferior surface you have the papillary process, the caudate process, the porta hepatis containing the bile duct, the hepatic artery, the portal vein, the fossa for the gallbladder lodging the gallbladder, the quadrate lobe and the fissure for the ligamentum teres hepatis. The organs related here are, we already spoke about the esophagus reaching here. The esophagus reaches here and then continues. So this impression goes on to form the impression for the stomach and here you have an elevation which is called as the tuber omentil. So from the stomach it goes on and this impression is for the duodenum. So the esophagus continues as the stomach here and then continues as the duodenum. 
and this is the tuber omentae. You have this region lying towards the right of the gallbladder which lodges the hepatic flexure and this impression is called as the colic impression. This region is called as the renal impression with the suprarenal gland lying just above and related to this region is the hepatorenal pouch of Morrison. So these are the regions which you see here. Thank you.